Oh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a JK flip flop, JK master slave flip flop simulation LT spies. Uh, so I have a package of all these files. I have uh, some of the gates, but not all of them. Like uh, I don't have the OR gate, but I don't need the OR gate for the JK master slave flip flop. So there are two ways to do it because you have probably have noticed that uh, you may need a three input NAND gate uh, in the front. So there are two ways to build it. Let me show you the first one. So this part here is a three input NAND gate. Um, there, there's a common mistake. For example, you might be thinking that this will be a three input NAND gate which is actually wrong, you know, for AND gate, this works, but for NAND gate, this doesn't work. You can think about this. This is A, this is B, this is C, so what is this? This will be A, B, A, B not, and it's gonna be A, so the final result here will be A, B not, and, C and not. So this thing here is not A and B and C not. So this is not A, B, sorry for the writing, just want to save the time. So this is not this, okay? Keep in mind, this is not right. So what you want to do is you can do this, A and B and C and then not. So that's a three input NAND gate. Or another way to do that is uh, you can do it like what I did over here. Uh, create a three input NAND gate in uh, using CMOS transistors. So uh, instead of put uh, two PMOS on the top and uh, two MOS is at the bottom in series, you just do three. So we got three inputs. So that's a three input NAND gate. Either one is going to work. So let's just uh, maybe just try this one first. So build the circuit, and you may need uh, to spend a little, little bit of time to modify the uh, time delay and periods, the T on, T period, all these parameters to make a proper simulation. And one thing you need to keep in mind, um, you know, based on the experience, right? If you don't understand why, then, you know, you probably wanna just spend a little bit more time to run more simulations, try to understand. But uh, here's one key thing. Uh, you may want to keep your clock oscillate at a little bit higher frequency compared to your G and K signals, okay? Let's run it first and I will let you know why. All right. So I want to add several plot pings. Uh, so clock, JK, clock, Q, so totally five. I need two more. And now the first one, I want to probe J, and second one, I want to plot K, third one, plot clock, and Q, and Q naught. All right. So let's check uh, Q and Q now really quick, see if they are inverted. So uh, obviously they are, so you can see that Q and Q not are being inverted. So we don't need to look at Q not, since we don't have a lot of space over here. Let's just delete it, because I know it's right. And here's one thing, the clock is too dense. Uh, you may not need to look at all of these, since it's just simply repeating all the signal patterns, you can see the signal Q. So we probably just need two periods and take a look at um, every single clock. Maybe you want to zoom in a little bit more because you know you just want to look at the on and off for the clock signals. All right, so let's bring up the cursor here. So let's look at, remember the JK flip-flop, if you, don't know how this kind of thing, how this device uh, behaves, you per, 
probably you want to go back to the like share videos that would rewatch the video again because this is critical if you don't understand why then what i'm going to uh, talk about over here will not make any sense okay so this is a master slave to give flip up so when j and k are different your q is going to copy j right so that's uh that's how the uh, JK flip will behave. But the thing is, for the master slave JK flip flop, it's not going to change the state for the output at the rising edge for this circuit. Why is that? Because this circuit, you can take a look. It's a falling edge triggered. The reason is you can see the clock. The clock is not directly triggering the second stage. However, it is being inverted, and the inverted result. The inverted clock is going to trigger the final output to be passed to Q naught. So, which means whenever the clock has a rising edge, the clock naught has a falling edge. So, nothing will be passed to the output from here. So, rising edge, what the rising edge is doing, the rising edge is sampling the input. So, for example, J and K are different, and, and J is zero, so at the rising edge, the clock is going to sample whatever data is at J and pass it to here. However, you can think about, it's not only happening at the rising edge, right? So whenever the clock is one, the signal is going to be passed, so whatever at J will be passed to this part, and waiting here uh, to be passed to the final kill. So when it's going to be passed to the final kill? Whenever this clock has a rising edge, it's going to be passed to here instantaneously. You have a rising edge over here, which means falling edge over here will have a rising edge here, and it's going to pass the signal from here to here. So this signal was um, transferred from here previously in the, in the, in the previous uh, rising edge of the clock. All right, I know this is confusing, but if you don't understand why, you have to go back to the lecture videos and watch that one more than once and twice until you can understand how that works. Okay, this is not, I, I cannot repeat this again over here, but uh, uh, you should know that. Rising edge, it's going to pass J to here. And since you have a rising edge, it's gonna, uh, you will have a falling edge after that. So at the falling edge, the signal uh, passed to here previously will be transferred to the output. So that's how that works. So now, after we know how that works, let's take a look at the waveform and see if that's uh, making sense. So we can verify the logic of functionality of the circuit. So now you can see JK are different, 0, 1. And at the rising edge, what's, what's uh, uh, JK flip out will do? So rising edge is going to sample J, and but there's nothing happening to the Q yet because you don't have a falling edge yet. So as a rising edge, pass J to the intermediate uh, output, and then falling edge, send it to Q. So you can see Q is zero. That's why. The thing is, it's not uh, the J and K are zero one all the time until here. So it's not changing. Uh, the state at all. So sampling, send, sampling, send, sampling, send. Uh, even after that, even after that, uh, it is zero, zero, which is a memory. So it's going to memorize whatever here it used to be. So sampling, send, sampling, send, but the thing is, J and K's are zero, zero, this is a memory. So it's not changing the state at all, which is making sense. And we have verified this part. And now let's take a look at here. What's happening? Sampling at this point, this rising edge, it samples a zero, zero, still a memory. So that's why after that rising edge, this is going to trigger the change of the output, but actually there's nothing is going to be changed. You had a JK uh, prior to be zero, zero, right? But however, it's going to happen over here. Now let's see. This rising edge samples the J and K to be one, zero, all right? And then at the next falling edge, that one will be passed 
to the kill. That's why you get a, a toggled output. All right, after that, sample send, sample send. Are you changing the GMQ status? No, you are not. It's always one zero. So it samples a one zero, send a one zero, uh, send a one. Sample the one zero, send a one, right? Sample one zero, send a one. Sample one zero, send one. So until where? Until here. Sample one zero, send one. Nothing is being changed. But until here, what is that? It's a one one. Keep in mind, when JK flip flop are being shorted, and the JMK terminals are being shorted together to the VDD, which is 1 1 here, it's a T flip flop. So, what does that mean? So it's a T flip flop at the falling edge, it's going to toggle the output. Now, let's see. Sample, JMK, all right, falling edge, toggle. It used to be 1, but now it's being toggled to 0. And sample, still 1 1, toggle it. Sample it, still 1-1, one, one, toggle it. See, the Q is always being toggled at the falling edge. Sample, toggle. Sample, toggle. Sample, oops, you got a 0-1 here. So 0-1 is going to pass a 0 to the output because the J is 0. It's going to pass J to the, to the output, which is Q. All right, let's see if that's true. Send. So now you're getting zeros. And after that, you are always having zero ones. So it's not changing the Q at all. It's sample send, sample send, but it's always sending J, which is not changing at all, right? So this part of the logic has been verified. And if you want to move forward, you can zoom out. And uh, it's just repeating, literally. And now let's take a look at this part, see if that's um, following the, the logic of the flip-flop. Now let's see, this part, the 0, 1, so it's not changing. Now let's look at here. Sample, this rising edge, sample JK to be 1, 0 here at this line, which means that the next falling edge is going to change the Q to be 1, because J becomes 1, and that J has been sampled into the intermediate output. So what is the intermediate output? It's over here. So the rising edge is going to send the J, which is 1, to here. And next, the right at the next falling edge, it's going to send this value being stored here, being latched here, to the final Q, which is this one. So it jumps to 1. All right, hopefully this is making sense. Now let's take a look at the, the other schematic. We just verify the uh, three input JK flip flop, uh, but we had we got a version two, which is the three input NAND gate directly built from the uh, CMOS transistor based three input NAND gate, and it's gonna work in the same way. Uh, if I var if I simulate it, and ah uh, no, I trace it. Sorry, I need a four more plot pings. All right, the first one I'm gonna plot. J, second one, K, third one, clock, fourth one, Q, sixth one, Q naught. And let's verify really quick if Q and Q naught are being inverted. And yes, they are. So let's delete Q naught. Right, save some space. And I'm gonna v, uh, I'm gonna zoom in part of it. And now let's verify it. All right, JK is zero 01, so sample zero 01. And the thing is, sample zero 01 at next the falling edge, I'm going to pass J to the output. So that's why your VQ, look at VQ here, it's being, it's being uh, toggled to zero because J is zero at this rising edge, right? Uh, and now uh, sample send, sample send. It's not changing the Q, the final state, because uh, J and Q, uh, J and K are uh, 0, 1 all the time until uh, here, still, until here, it's going to be 0, 0, so it's a memory, it's going to memorize whatever before that. So Q was 0, so it's going to keep the 0 state. 
and sample, uh, send, sample, send, sample, send, sample. Look at here. So sample JK to be one zero. So at the next falling edge, it's going to toggle the output. All right, and that happened. And sample, send, sample, send until here. This, the J and K inputs are changed. Let's change it to one one. So after it, it, it is changed to one one, you will expect the output will be toggled at, at the next falling edge. And it is being toggled. All right. And then here, look at the clock. Toggle this again. Toggle this again. Why? Because the clock at the rising edge of the clock, your J and K's are one ones. Same concept until here. It's still one one, so still toggle. But until here, look at the clock, the rising edge, sample zero one. So you're expecting Q to be zero next at the next uh, uh, falling edge. So it is zero. All right, so this is verified as well. And now you know that you have two methods to, to make a three input, three input NAND gate. And also how, how to understand the, the uh, you know, waveforms input output of the, of the JK master slave uh, flip flop. And do not try to memorize it. Try to understand this first because the JK master slave flip flop may behave different differently compared to the regular JK flip flop. And if you see a, a different schematic, you probably will not be able to answer the questions uh, correctly if you don't understand this totally. Um, you know, understand this first before you move forward. All right, uh, hopefully this will be helpful and uh, see you in the next video in the future.